And so it was Sarah Haynes. That was the voice of the lady I played. I said to myself uh, before I came on, I was looking at a few of your comments. I said, okay, these people who are fronting and saying that they watched The View, but they did not know that that was Sarah Haynes's voice. These are people who do not watch the show every day. They are lying. They don't watch. Sarah has a very distinct voice. I mean, so it's like, okay, no, I don't believe it. I'm now convinced. So anyway, welcome back. My View on The View, the NBO TV podcast. I'm back. Remember I told you yesterday I was coming back and that I was going to list off for you seven reasons that I believe that Sarah Haynes, um, should moderate this show in case something happens. Now, before I go into these seven things, we got to get on the same page. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to agree, but let's, I want to make sure you're clear about what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's start here. I am not talking about them bringing someone from outside the show. That's not the conversation I'm having. I'm talking about should something happen, where, because they've got all these changes happening behind the scenes at ABC and Walt Disney, right? If something were to happen and they have to pull from the current group we have, which is Whoopi, Joy, Anna, Sarah, Sonny, and Alyssa, Sarah is the one they need to pull from. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand the context? So I'm not talking about people from the outside and if they flip up the table and change it completely. No, 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 no. I'm talking about with all these freaking changes that are going around they would more than likely choose from somebody already there and it would be Sarah. Okay. It should be, I should say Sarah. Okay. Now let me make sure you understand the next point. That's very uh, germane to this conversation. Okay. For those of you who are just passing through and you haven't been with me, let me just make sure you understand something about what's going on with joy and Whoopi. Okay. If you already know this, skip ahead. Currently right now. Okay. Joy and Whoopi. Both have two years remaining on their current contract. They're currently in one of those years now, season 27. And next year is the second year, season 28, which ends, are you with me? In the summer of 2025, August of 2025 is the end of season 28. As of today, Sunday, June 2nd, neither lady has been renewed for additional seasons. Are you clear? Are you understand what I'm saying? That's very important to know. That's like a foundational thing we need to make sure we're all on the same page about. The, The contract negotiations and renewals took place earlier in the spring. Brian was renewed. People who were up for renewals is what I'm talking about. Whoopi and Joy were up for renewals. They did not get renewed. Now, that doesn't mean they won't at some point, but I can't see that unless ABC is changing the way they're doing their contracts. Maybe when it's your time to renew, they're only now going to take it on a season by season basis, meaning everyone's contract will eventually go be one year and then you have to be renewed for another year and then another year, like a lot of jobs. You know, a lot of companies have changed that because of their financial situation, etc. You no longer have these long contracts. It's now one year and then you have to go through a, a you know, of course, um, what they call those HR things and then you may or may not be renewed again, okay, for your contract. So that's that's the deal. Now, why am I even talking about this in terms of Sarah? Whoopi is scheduled to be there until next summer. I just explained that. However, if she gets fired before then, or if she quits before then, or if there's a health issue that she has that keeps her from being able to finish this current contract, they would have to do something, right? And I'm telling you that they would more than likely pull from someone who's already at the table. Now you say, well, it should just be joy because joy already moderates on Friday. No, have you been with me? We've already talked about what's been going on behind the scenes with joy. Joy is so difficult to work with behind the scenes. Where did I get that information? Did I just pull it out the air? No, I got it from the mouth of Brian Tetta. And I played those clips before on prior podcast. Now, maybe it is her age. I'm not an ageist, but maybe it's because she's 81. And, you know, and people do say older people get cranky. Mm -hmm. But I tend to think, whereas Whoopi expresses her displeasure with the PC culture now at ABC, where you will get really in big time trouble if you say something you shouldn't say, all that kind of thing. Whoopi expresses her displeasure with those things in a very passive aggressive manner by 
making these low level comments and hitting out at the executives via her words. Joy, on the other hand, takes her uh, her passive aggressive behavior. It, she expresses it to the people she actually works with, the, the lowly p- people behind the scenes. I mean, I, Brian Ted has actually said they have to gauge Joy's mood when she comes in every day. Guys, it's time for that person to leave. If we all have to walk on eggshells, if this person's in a bad mood, it's time for them to leave. Not us, them. (laughs) But she is on a contract and it doesn't expire until next year. Okay. So if something were to happen and they got to choose from some current person, it needs to be Sarah. Now let's go into those seven reasons. Well, the first one is because Sarah has actually done moderating outside of the view, not just on the view, but outside the view right? She's moderated a couple of times on our show and she did a fantastic job. She got such positive feedback. Well, it was Twitter back then uh, on Twitter and Instagram. I mean, people are like, whoa, look at Sarah. Okay. But she's also moderated outside the show. Take a listen to the last time she was telling us about moderating. I got the opportunity to moderate at an Unstoppable Women Leadership Symposium last night at the Intrepid. And I sat with Dana Kennedy, who's been here on the show. She wrote the Journal for Jordan. That's right. And and then two. Yeah. And she's been doing this kind of a thing now for the past three years. So maybe um, if you are like really new, you weren't with me. I did a podcast about three years ago when she signed up. I don't know what those things are called, but if you want to be a speaker, you can sign up. I think they're called like Speakers Bureau. I don't know, something in the industry where if you want to be booked for speaking gigs, kind of like what Anna does and things like that. And she first started off very, very small. She would do little events for glad in support of her brother here and there. And then she expanded it. And then she expanded it. And then she expanded it right now. At the same time, we're seeing her grow and change at the table where she's become so much stronger than she used to be, where she can actually say, uh, stop and let me finish my, what I, my point, right? Whereas we never saw that with her before. So this all culminated, um, in, in a new Sarah. So she has the chops to moderate, right? Not to mention she's led a couple of those game shows for ABC. Okay. So that's number one. The second reason I'm saying that if something were to happen and they have to choose from the current panel, it should be Sarah is because Sarah has gotten so much stronger. She has, she really has. We can see that, you know, I think, well, no, I don't think I know this for a fact. Very often we look at someone like Whoopi, who when she's on her A game, can't nobody touch her as the moderator. I mean, can't nobody who ever sat in that seat touch Whoopi when she's on her A game. But because of a number of things, she's less and less on her A game. But when she is, baby, (laughs) okay, remember when, let's just recall to mind how Whoopi, you know, handled business. Remember when those women came and protested Ted Cruz? Whoopi handled it. See, this is a live show. Things could happen on the spot. You got to be ready to go. Remember a few weeks ago when the guy was filming on his cell phone? Whoopi lovingly and graciously handled that. Remember when Michelle Tafoya, that lady who used to be a, a sports reporter, she was trying out for Megan McCain's job. And my goodness, the, the audience... <laughs> It's not funny, but who, Lord have mercy, they booed that woman. So I can still, I can still remember the look on that woman's face. Like, oh my God. And then she just kind of uh, leaned into it. Bring it on, bring it on. Y'all remember that? And everybody was like, what? Bring it on. Lady, do you know where you are? You know, but they booed that lady almost mercilessly. Whoopi handle that. Okay. So. But we see Whoopi, she's such a strong moderator when she's on her A-game, as I was saying before I had my laughing fit, but we forget she didn't start there. And I think that's a shame, you know, we look at where someone is and we assume they've always been that way. She didn't start there. She did not. She grew to being a strong moderator. And just like Sarah started out very timid when it came to giving her opinion, she is growing stronger. You know, I always say that this table is like the game of double Dutch. Remember that a couple years ago, I started talking about that game of double Dutch. You got to judge when to jump in the ropes, girl, but you can't just stand there because we're going to be like, okay, girl, come on, jump in. (laughs) Okay. And so because there are a lot of people talking, you got to, you know, those ropes are going, you got to judge when to jump in, when to stay out, but you can't stay out for too long. Okay, and so she's gotten so much stronger, she would make an excellent moderator if they had to choose from someone at the current table. The third reason I'm saying it's Sarah, she's very non-problematic. 
out of all the women at the table, I don't know about Alyssa, so I'm not going to include her in this part, but Whoopi, Joy, Anna, and Sunny and Sarah, Sarah's the one who's gotten in the least amount of trouble because she doesn't really say a lot of things that are very problematic. So when you're on a moder- when you're moderating a show like this, definitely you don't want to have a personal life that's very chaotic because that distracts from the show, but you also don't want to be a person who um who rants a lot um or who um is extremely uh, your 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 opinions are extremely emotion based because then you could actually say something in the heat of the moment that you shouldn't say that gets you in trouble and or like remember last year we talked about the cease and desist from Turning Point USA um, and then we, they got the letter from the Orthopedic Association when Sunny said you know so you just got to be very careful sh- careful so she's non problematic the one two three fourth reason is Sarah is very balanced. I started saying years ago, and I've seen people parrot that from me, which is fine. But I've, I started saying Sarah was the balance at our table years ago, and she is. Well, when you're going to be the moderator, you have to be very balanced. She has that. The next reason I'm saying Sarah is she listens very well. There's listening, there's hearing, and then there's active listening. I find that most people hear, which is not the same as listening. And then I find from the people who listen, not everyone listens actively. Sarah is an active listener. It's kind of like, think about that game of double dutch again. You know how you're standing off to the side, you're judging whether to jump in right now, right? You, you got to be actively present in the moment. She has that ability. Um, one of the things that really saddens me is that Joy has lost the, Joy used to be an active listener, but she isn't anymore. Whoopi used to be too. Uh, But look at what happens when Joy moderates. My goodness, if one of the women uh, disagrees with her opinion or one of the guests, Joy just jumps in and just all over them, right? Same thing with Whoopi. If, if Whoopi, if you don't agree with Whoopi, she has a way of shutting you down. Okay. And so Joy and Whoopi have lost the ability, it seems to me, to actively listen, right? The next reason I'm saying it should be Sarah. Again, I'm talking about if something happens and they have to choose from the current people, she's very familiar to us. She's very, excuse me, with us, to us. You know, I said before on the opening of this um, little mini series that there was a time on our show when, because they were trying to, I mean, this was a whole new concept, women (laughs) sitting around on a daytime talk show talking, that was a new concept that Barbara Walters and Bill Getty pioneered. And so, of course, to get the show out there, they needed a really big name. They needed someone to helm the show um, other than Barbara, who people knew, and that was Meredith, okay? But then it went to Rosie and then Whoopi. And listen, those days are gone now, now because of the advent of social media. I mean, people can literally go viral overnight and you can become worldwide known in a matter of seconds on TikTok. Okay, you could be trending by the end of the day on Instagram. So you ain't got to have no big name, but you do need to be familiar to people. Well, Sarah is familiar. We're all comfortable with Sarah. Okay, let's say something were to happen and they had to pull from somebody from the outside. Well, we might have to get to know them. See, and not to mention, and this goes into my next reason. I think I'm giving you eight reasons instead of seven. Sarah is already familiar to them. So it's not just she's familiar to us and we would look on the screen and see a very familiar and comforting face. It's Sarah Haynes, but she knows the ropes there. She's she has chemistry with all the women. They love her in makeup and hair. The craft services love her. So she's comfortable to them. So they wouldn't have to adjust to a brand new person who may have, you know, they don't want, they only want Perrier, no, excuse me, Topo Chico water in their dressing room, not San Pellegrino, right? They, they, they don't want to have to do with all that. Sarah is Comfortable on both sides, camera and I'm behind the camera. And then finally, she's the most tolerant of different opinions. I just hit on that a moment ago. You know, I was talking about active listening. Sarah is the most. If you watch Sarah, when people have different opinions on this show, she really tries to listen and ascertain why they see that the way they do, which is a quality both Joy and Whoopi have lost. Um, And again, it could be age. It could just be said in their ways. It could just be whatever. But there you have it. Those are my thoughts about if something were to happen before the end of next year and they got to pull a new moderator from this table, Sarah is the one they need to go with. She would make an excellent moderator. So that's my view on the view. Now, listen, if you enjoyed hanging out with me, you may not agree with everything I said. That's okay. But if you enjoyed hanging out with me, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and I'll talk to you on the next podcast. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.